Martial law, EMPs, collapse of the economy, increase in natural disasters, tsunamis, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions. They will stop at nothing until they achieve their ominous goal. And when the final card is in place, a new world order. Then comes the Antichrist. Hi, it's Lynn Liaz, and there is so much prophecy happening, it's almost unreal. Now, I have Bob with TradeGenius.co. He is an expert in the financial and stock market industry and has been for years. More on that later. But first off, I want to share some information. We've just got so much, so many different topics to cover tonight. But I want to share some information. It was on Michael Snyder's website. It says, uh, and by the way, that's endoftheamericandream.com. June 7th, FEMA will hold a drill to prepare for a 9.0 Cascadia subduction zone earthquake and tsunami. Starting on June 7th, FEMA is going to conduct a large-scale drill, and this is just in a matter of days, that has been named Cascadia Rising, and it will simulate the effects of a magnitude 9.0 earthquake along the Cascadia subduction zone and an accompanying west coast tsunami dozens of feet tall. According to the official flyer for the event, more than 50 counties plus major cities, tribal nations, state and federal agencies, private sector businesses, and non-governmental organizations across the states, Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, will be participating In addition to Cascadia Rising, U.S. Northern Command will be holding five other exercises simultaneously. Now, Michael Snyder writes that according to the final draft of the Cascadia Rising drill plan, those five exercises are entitled Ardent Century 2016, Vigilant Guard, Special Focus Exercise, Turbo Challenge, and Joint Logistics Over the Shore. The primary scenario that of all these participants will be focusing on will be one that involves a magnitude 9.0 earthquake along the Cascadia subduction zone, followed by a giant tsunami that could displace up to a million people from Northern California to Southern Canada. Michael goes on to write, we have never seen such a disaster before in all of U.S. history. Do they know something? that the rest of us do not. And I agree with him. It's funny that they are preparing to deal with the effects of a magnitude 9.0 earthquake along the Cascadia subduction zone because that is exactly the size of earthquake that Michael Snyder warned about in an article back in March. Now, We also had the recent news about the San Andreas Fault. We have warnings about the New Madrid Like Michael Snyder said, do they know something we don't? And don't get me wrong, I think it's great that they are preparing for these things. They need to. But there is just so much happening. There's no doubt about it that things are going to get much worse. Now, Bob, you've got some information to share as well about some other earthquake things that are happening particularly a question about is a major eruption imminent earthquake swarms have been reported at mount hood mount rainier and mount saint helens what do you know about that yeah elin uh, and uh, welcome uh, everybody and yeah it's really fascinating and and you know occasionally you'll have a swarm on one of the volcanoes um in the northwest but all three of them have become active at the same time and in fact even earlier We've had uh, earthquakes swarmed all the way down to uh, they call the Ladera um, uh, Caldera in Long Valley in California. So the whole part of the Western United States is 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 waking up at the same time. Now the interesting thing about earth uh, these earthquake swarms is 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 that they're foretelling magna coming back up into the chambers of these of these volcanoes, 
And what's really got them concerned is Mount St. Helen already blew in, in 1980, and its magma chamber is filling again, which tells us that there's a lot of movement going on underneath that Cascadia fault zone. And what's really, really interesting is, is, as everybody's been following the news on earthquakes around the world, is the whole Pacific Rim, they call it the Ring of Fire, has been very, very active, except for the United States. So I think people are getting really jumpy that, hey, we're due, and we're due for something pretty big. Yeah, so a 9.0 earthquake would be devastating. Is is You know, you saw what happened in Japan with, with the earthquake they, they just had uh, a couple of years ago, and it won't simply affect just Washington and Oregon. It will, it'll reverb, which means it'll boomerang around. We'll catch it in California. Hawaii will get devastated from it. Alaska will get devastated from it. And Japan, and this is how they found out in the first place that we have earthquakes this size is because in Japan in the 1700s, I think it was actually in 1700, they had a, a tsunami that came through with no earthquake. So it caught the people off guard and killed many thousands of people in Japan because the tsunami was still that big after traveling through the entire Pacific Ocean. So I think I think they know more than they're saying, Lynn, as they always do, and and I think I think maybe something's ready to go here that that could be pretty devastating for our country. You know, I said you know one of these earthquakes, this is like a country-ending event. If we get a 9.0 earthquake that would be close to Seattle or close to Portland, it would just be, it's unthinkable. Yeah, definitely some strange things going on, and um, it just continues to amaze me but at the same time I don't know if this is going to make sense I guess it sounds kind of like an oxymoron at the same sense it doesn't amaze me because you know just so many things just keep happening and happening and I've said on other shows that I've done that it is just like the Bible says about the woman in labor and how the labor pains you know over the I don't know I'm just guessing it seems like it seems like it really got started in 2011. I mean, I know prophetic events have happened before that, but as far as this labor pain type scenario, um, in 2011, things started happening. Then in 2012, it got worse. 2013, it got worse. And it just seems like every year, more and more things keep happening. What do you think? I mean, do you agree with what I'm saying? Oh, no, for sure. They... Um they're, they're counting the number of active volcanoes around the world right now, and it's the most they've ever recorded erupting or active at the same time. And the same with the large earthquakes. You know, we've always had thousands and thousands of earthquakes every year in the country and in the world. But lately, the uh, the big earthquakes around the world have been increasing in frequency, as, as you described. This last 10 years, have they've seen more magnitude six of greater earthquakes than they had for the past century. And so you're, you're absolutely right on with, with things that are increasing at an increasing rate. And it's, you know, it's just not earthquakes and, and volcanoes, you know, obviously, you know, we'll talk a little bit about the weather here soon, but you know, there's just a lot of things happening all at once. It's kind of overwhelming the senses. Yeah. And we know that, uh, the UN promotes climate, this whole climate change agenda, for one, you know, they're trying to establish this new world order. They've got the Pope. We got the Pope and Obama, you know, coming to agreement with different things. I know this is outside the weather, what we were just talking about. But, I mean, we're seeing this one world religion forming, this whole Chrislam business. Um, it was just in the news recently that Hillsong United in New York, um, they did this dance that was very provocative, and the girls were dressed very scantily, and they actually had a pastor uh, mimic the dancing naked cowboy wearing a pair of underwear, holding a guitar, and the actual dancing naked cowboy was offended by this, because even though he does that, he said he wouldn't do that in church, in the house of God, and it's his trademark, so... Um, a lot of Christians were offended by this. It just shows you where the church is going and where things are heading. We've got this whole homosexual agenda going on with bathrooms and laws and trying to train our children to be homosexuals and just everything at once happening. And there's no doubt in my mind that God's judgment is not upon us because 
I, I think earthquakes in the Bible were always one of the tools God used to bring his judgment. And so these things are happening and it gets crazier and crazier. Now you had some interesting things you shared with me um, to do with the weather, like the rain and sea levels. And, you know, there's something about the Austrian vineyards and so forth. Did you want to go ahead and share that with the listeners? Because I thought it was pretty interesting what you had put together with that. When we talked last time, I was giving you a, a bit of a sneak peek in terms of what was happening in, in your area. And since we last spoke, the month of May has been nothing short of astounding. You know, we had we had snow in May in Maine, and they they don't have snow in Maine um, with that are recordable. You know, of depth. You know, there's no, no accumulation, and it and it fell in the potato growing region of Maine. And what's interesting about that is, is not only is that where we get our potatoes, but that's where 25% of all the seed potatoes, those are the potato seeds that other farmers use around the country to grow potatoes. And last year they had a snow a couple weeks earlier. And as we were talking about how things are progressing with the global cooling is every year they're getting later and later frost and later and later snow. They also had a, a snow and, and a frost in Idaho where they also do potatoes. And, you know, it's interesting. I was talking to a friend who uh, uh, I do some business with that's out of Ireland, and he laughed. He goes, Bob, it's just like the Idaho, uh, the, uh, the Ireland potato famine that we had in the 1820s, 1840s, where, you know, we, mass starvation and mass famine. And it was just kind of an ironic, uh, you know, similarity. And it wasn't just there. We had in Wisconsin, they had frost and freeze that, that basically is destroying the corn crops. In the Midwest, we've had hailstorms that are destroying the corn crops and the wheat crops. And in fact, the, um, the farmers don't know what they can plant because it's been happening so late in the season that it's, it, they may have to leave their, their fields fallow. And then um, not two weeks later, they had huge snowstorms in China, just to the north and the west of Beijing, where it usually it's very, very warm. And so they had eight inches of snow in their wheat growing area. At the same time, they're having massive floods in their rice growing areas. And people say, oh, rice and water, that's great. But it's, it's so much water, Lynn, that they can't get the crops in the ground. And, and we talked about this before when, when I kind of mentioned, you know, in, in the book that we give away on our, our, our website is that China is very, very, very susceptible to famine and they only have two or three major growing areas and when the weather cools is when they have a lot of devastation and so we're watching china very closely but what's even even more interesting to me is what's happening in europe and it just happened last week is that the entire belt from france through austria through romania through the Ukraine, they basically lost their entire uh, fruit crops. They've had 80% losses of their cherry crops and their apricot crops. And then their, their vineyards in Austria, they lost 13% of their vines. And in France, they lost their, uh, their vines in, in Beaujolais area and also in the area in which they grow the cognac you know, spirits. Those, those, are, those are distilled from, from wine. And they had storms there that just basically wiped out the crops. And, and so these are, these are the signs of, of what we call the, the global cooling. This is a La Nina effect, but it's on steroids. And so we're looking just like you're talking about with the earthquakes and the volcanoes. You know, we're seeing the same thing on the climate. Every year, the, the climate is getting progressively more extreme and it's getting colder and, and it's, it's affecting more and more crops. And so that's, that's the northern hemisphere. And in the southern hemisphere, they just are going through their fall weather right now. And it, it's destroyed their soybean crops. In southern Africa, they just came out of a drought. And in some countries like Malawi and Zambia, they don't have enough food for their people. They're going to have to import food for the first time in, in decades. And in India, they've had their fourth year of drought. And it's to the point now where they're actually trying to divert rivers, major infrastructure projects to divert rivers just to get, just to get the water to the fields to the farmers so, so that the people there don't starve. And, and this is just the beginning, Lynn. It's, it's going to get worse. And 
we see it as, you know, we're traders, you know, the business that I'm in, we trade the commodities. And in, in, in the last six weeks, all the grain prices have lifted more than 10%. And what's going to happen is you're going to start seeing that translate into food prices as we go through the year. So, you know, get your get your cheap pork, get your cheap beef now and, and stock up where you can, because the last time this happened in earnest was in 2008 and 2011. And you had rice shortages where you couldn't buy rice at any price. And, and you had uh, you had uh, wheat prices go up double, and and this is going to affect the price of bread. It's going to affect the price of beef. It's going to press, you know, affect the price of pork, and and it's just going to get, it's just going to get really, really, really difficult for people to cope. You know, for us, it's going to be very inconvenient. For some parts of the world, it's going to be devastating. So that's a little bit of what's going on with the, with the weather and the global cooling, and you know, tying it back to what you talked about with the Pope and, and the elites, you know, they, they may want to be, you know, seen being prepared with an earthquake, but, you know, global warming is absolutely their religion. You know, they, they have to substitute a God they don't want to serve. So they have to create a God to force people to serve. Sounds very satanic. And, and so, and you have the Pope of all people leading the charge on this. And the last thing they want to do is to have this religion of theirs be usurped. So they're going to say or do anything to keep people from connecting the dots on this. But make no mistake, it is coming and it's mathematical and it's and it's it's not a a I wish it's going to happen or you wish it's going to happen. It's already happened in the past. And you just have to simply do the math and, and do the homework and you can see it's going to happen again. And. Our governments, for whatever reason, obviously control is one of them. They don't want to tell us that this is happening because they can't control it. You know, global warming, you can kind of get people to do things with. Global cooling is a whole other animal, and, and they don't have answers for it. So we're going to have to take it upon ourselves to be prepared for the global cooling. So that's a little bit about the weather, Lynn. Well, you know, I, recently I had um, Gary Ka. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he's been on a lot of different programs like Sid Roth and so forth. So Gary Ka had shared some very interesting things about America's destiny, and it fits right in with what we're talking about. I'll share some of that um, real quick. And then one more recent news clip in my area, actually, that took place not too far from me that um, pretty amazing. Anyhow, um, he had written an article about America's destiny, and he, he asked the question, where does America fit in? What is our role, if any? Um, what, is it, what is the role that we're playing in shaping the emerging global government? And he wrote that during the last century, our beloved country has been blessed beyond measure, which is true. By the grace of God and through his favor, it has risen to become the wealthiest and most powerful nation on earth. However, since World War II, the influence of the U.S. has increasingly been manipulated by internationalists to accomplish their purpose. Beginning in a major way with the founding of the United Nations, the chief task of the United States would be to build the new world order. Only the U.S. had the wherewithal to put all of the pieces in place. It has been our financial resources, creative technology, and cultural diversity that have made the occult New Age dream of one world possible. We are also the only nation comprised of people from all other nations, giving us an unparalleled influence over the rest of the world. So now that we've taken humanity to the verge of global unification through the United Nations... Is there anything left for us to do? Has the United States fulfilled its destiny in the eyes of global planners? How might the answer to this question affect our future? Gary writes, If global leaders still have a purpose for America in their overall scheme of things, then perhaps we have a bit more time. But if in their eyes we have achieved our purpose, then we are expendable and could soon be eliminated from the picture. I address these possibilities in en route to global occupation. 
regarding the fate of America. And he shares an excerpt from that. But he also talks about some things that are pretty interesting. He said, if the year, um, setting the stage, if the year 2000 was a coming out celebration for globalists, this year and the years to follow promise to be a time of implementing the one world agenda. And that's what we're talking about here. The events and meetings being planned for the rest of the year and beyond are specifically designed to give teeth to the United Nations and the cause of world government. Global planners are covering all the bases from economics, which uh, we're getting ready to get into. Bob is going to talk about economics. Again, visit Bob's website at tradegenius.co, and he has a free book you can download there that'll help you out. Bob, um, I had it written down somewhere. Can you tell the listeners the name of your book again that they can download from your website? Yes, Stocks That Will Survive the Economic Collapse. Stocks that will survive the economic collapse, and it is there to help you. He uploads uh, free videos every day to help you with financial information, and he's going to get into talking about some very important economy news here shortly. But be sure and check out his website, tradegenius.co. Okay, so anyways, back to what I was saying, from economics and interfaith religion to issues of sovereignty gun control, and laws on how to rear children. Paramount to the success of their globalization efforts is the public's acceptance of their extensive environmental program, which is intended to be the main vehicle for achieving UN empowerment. The core document of their agenda is the Earth Charter, viewed as the Magna Carta of the New World Civilization, the chief spokesperson on behalf of the charter is Mikhail Gorbachev. Gorbachev had officially unveiled the charter during a formal ceremony in Urbino, Italy on June 8th. He hopes to get his charter cleared through the UN by the end of next year, after which he expects to move forward with the rapid implementation of global government. So you can see here how they're doing all this. And I do not know the exact date that this article was written, um, I'm assuming it's fairly recent with some of the other things that he does discuss in this article. But um, you can see how the UN is doing all these things. They've got their hands in all uh, in everybody's business, creating this new world order so they can bring about their one world leader. And that will be the Antichrist. Now, most of us believe that this man who's going to be the Antichrist is in our midst. I Do you believe that the Antichrist or this person is going to be the Antichrist, Bob? What's your opinion on that? Do you believe he is alive and well today? I personally believe that he's about to become manifest somehow here in the near future. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, I, I, I do. I think there's there's nothing in the Bible that prevents the Antichrist from coming on the scene at, at any given point in time. I think all the prophecies that precede him showing up have been met. And so uh, I absolutely uh, uh, believe that he can come on the scene at any time. And and then there, I hope my pre-tribulation rapture uh, views would be invoked <laughs> and I can watch from heaven. Amen. Well, you know, just another little tidbit from this article. It has to do with Dimitri Dudman. Have you heard of Dimitri, Bob? Uh, he's familiar to me. Okay. Well, he's that guy. Now, he, he has since passed away, but he was from Romania, and he came to America in the 80s. And everybody at the time looked at him like he was crazy. He came here specifically to America with nothing. <laughs> Hardly at all to give this message to America of warning from God that if America didn't repent, America was going to burn. So um, anyways, Gary wrote that in the early 90s, he met the Romanian pastor, Dimitri Dudman, while visiting friends in Wisconsin. He was not afraid to speak his mind. He was deeply disappointed and discouraged by what he saw in the United States and how it was affecting his homeland. Here's what Dimitri said. Freedom has allowed wonderful things in Romania, such as preaching the gospel and large crusades, the building of churches, and the freedom to distribute Bibles and Christian literature. But freedom has also greatly harmed Romania. 
just as the doors opened to religious freedom, they opened to freedoms for evil that had not been allowed under communism. Heavy rock music and fads from the West, from over here in the wonderful, great United States of America, sewage pipeline, you know, from hell, if you ask me anymore. Um, Heavy rock music and fads from the West are pouring in. Pornography is sold openly on sidewalk tables in view of all. Television programs that must be purchased from cable in America are beamed freely to all in Romania. Where did it come from again? From the West. Our heads hung in shame as we learned that the filthiest of American pornography is now polluting that land. A non-Christian commented to Virginia that she didn't understand why, when the gospel came from America, did the worst imaginable filth and sick things now come? What can we say in answer? And how can we not believe that God will not judge our land for spreading its pollution of filth to the ends of the earth? Now, one final comment here Gary Ka had added in this article. He said that when he heard Dimitri speak these words, he was grief-stricken because he knew that his words were true. He went on to share that God had brought him, this is Dimitri, Dimitri went on to share that God brought him to America to warn this country of coming destruction if it did not repent. He said that God would not tolerate our sins longer and would soon lift his protective hand from us. When this happens, he said, parts of America would burn, being destroyed by fire resulting from an attack. Dimitri, however, also said that God dearly loved the people of this country and had taken note of the many Christians over the years who had served him faithfully and had spread his gospel message around the world. He said God wanted to spare and protect us, but if America didn't repent soon, it would be too late. Okay, so this was many years ago, again, that Dimitri first came here back in the early 80s with this message. God's been warning us. For a long time, I personally do not believe, I've, I've heard all these messages like this Trump prophecy and all that business. You know, God gave us scriptures for a reason, and Jesus himself gave us signs to watch for. And Jesus told us when we saw these ha- things happen that we would know that it was at the door. Okay, God's word doesn't lie. We're seeing these signs. So what does that mean? That means it's at the door. And I think there's going to be people in America who are going to repent, but this nation as a whole is not going to repent. We are overrun by filth and the disease of sin. This nation is on a one-way ticket straight to hell. Now, I'm not saying everybody in this nation is on a one-way ticket to hell. I'm talking about our government, this nation as a whole. This nation, in my opinion, is, is Babylon. We're, we're horrible. We're unrepentant, unappreciative people, stubborn. Even many Christians who refuse to wake up and see what is happening. And we've got all these people working hard to warn the people. Now, there's many false prophets out there, too. And there's many people out there who think they're hearing from God and they're putting out messages that aren't true. So we have to always be watchful and be weary and be prayerful and pray about everything. But there are a lot of real prophets out there and watchmen sounding the alarm. No, I, I think I think you're you're right on, you know, Lynn, and you know, and how we're making mountains out of molehills. I saw an article that said, you know, there's there's probably, you know, twenty to thirty thousand people in this country that identify as transgender and yet we're we're causing incredible chaos you know, in our schools and in our businesses to accommodate a problem that we really don't have. And there's only one reason to do that is just really to usurp, you know, God's natural order of, you know, what is a man and what is a woman. And, you know, you're talking about the filth of, of, you know, the sexual diseases is, you know, 25%, you know, I have a daughter in high school and, you know, 25% of all the children coming out of high school eventually get a sexually transmitted disease. And as I tell my daughter, I said, that's a death sentence. And, you know, there's so many different cancers that come strictly from 
just from you know sexual activity that that it comes from these viruses, and so you know we're we're killing ourselves and we're harming ourselves, and because we we refuse to uh, obey God's precepts and you know and, and these rules are really for our safety, not because He wants to control us, because he, but because He loves us, and so it's just it's really sad to see you know. In our lifetime, Lynn, we've seen a country that that upheld morality to now we just simply mock it. And those who are moral are 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 mocked. And you know, I mean God talks about that, you know, you know, that people are just we're living in oppositeville. You know, that you know, what is good is evil, what is evil is good in a man's eyes now. Just like the days of Noah will be like the coming of the Son of Man. So that's just another prophecy that's coming that's coming forth is that you know is there anyone left in this world that's worth saving you know we're we're like the church of laodicea you know we're neither cold nor hot for god and he's going to spew us out of his mouth and that's the last church that 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 john spoke of you know in the book of revelation so um you're right on and and dimitri was right on with his his prophecy and and it's just so sad it just saddens my heart that that you know we fell so far so fast. And, you know, when I was younger, I always thought, you know, how can, how can, how can the Antichrist ever show up? People would just be pointing him out. And now today, you know, Christians are just openly mocked. And so I could absolutely see the Antichrist coming on stage and people absolutely adoring him because he's mocking the Christians. So, you know, so yeah, so I, I totally, I totally buy into, um, you know, his viewpoint on this, Lynn. Yeah, and you know, you mentioned that verse, um, and I know Isaiah five twenty says, "Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil; that put darkness for light, and light for darkness; that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter." And that's exactly what we're seeing these days. Is we're seeing. Um, Anybody that stands for truth and stands for anything with morals is made fun of, put down, called a crazy, even called a terrorist. We're called terrorists. We're, in fact, we're uh, labeled as even more of a threat than actual terrorist, which I find disgusting but humorous at the same time, like humorous from the standpoint of, what? You've got to be kidding me. Um, so that's crazy. Now, kind of off the subject before we delve into the um, economy stuff, because uh, Bob's got quite a bit to share on that. Just something strange, just on a totally different subject, because this is just like not that far from my home. Apparently, and I don't know if anybody has seen the footage, I will put the link when this gets uploaded to YouTube as a video, I'll be sure and I'll drop the link in there um, so you can see the pictures. But it's gone viral. Um, it says, Ohio UFO video shot near Air Force Base stuns viewers. Now, nobody can really explain this. And I watched one guy's video, and he actually had a um, one of his subscribers some time ago send him a picture of a UFO that looks identical to the one that was above Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. I don't know if you've seen anything on that, Bob, or heard anything about it. Uh, no, I haven't, Lynn, so I'm, I'm eager to listen. Well, I'm actually going to send it to you right now over Skype so you can pull it open and look at it. But when you get it, click on it and look at these pictures. It's weird. It's like not your regular shape of what you would think. Now, my opinion on UFOs, I do believe there's a lot of phony baloney stuff out there, but I believe they're satanic. I also believe there's stuff that our government has that they test that could look like UFOs to us. I believe there's enemy aircrafts that spy on us that could look like that. So there's many explanations, okay? But I do believe um, Ephesians chapter 6, I think it's verse 10 or 11, I don't have it in front of me, talks about principalities and powers of darkness in the air. So I do believe mm. that there are demonic entities that are manifest in our atmosphere, and so I would never um, doubt for the life of me that there are my own mother actually was on her work went on her way to work one day. And it was on my oldest daughter's birthday. It was uh, August the 8th. And she was sitting in a traffic light and she saw 
a UFO. And this was your standard spinning UFO. She said it came it came down pretty low. She saw it clearly and then it zipped away and then it stopped and then it disappeared. And she saw it. My grandma, who's now deceased, she lived in a court or a cul-de-sac. She actually saw one hovering above a tree at the end of her court. I saw this strange, strange thing once at night, and there were these three weird shaped lights that I've never, unlike anything I'd ever seen. And my children saw it, and um, a good friend of mine at the time saw it. Nobody had ever seen anything like this, and they were all flying in unison. And then each one, it was a totally clear night, each one disappeared one by one just disappeared. But I don't know what that was. I couldn't call it a UFO. I don't I don't know what it was. But um, you know, so we're seeing more demonic if this is indeed a UFO. Um we're seeing more demonic activity, more um spiritual things happening in the atmosphere as well. You know, as we see the increase of corruption and sin on this earth, we're going to see more demonic manifestations. That's just par for the course. That's what happens. And we know that evil increases in the end times. And God has to allow this to happen so that prophecy will be fulfilled. And ultimately, okay, a lot of people ask, why does God allow all this evil? It's horrible. Why does he allow it? Like I said, prophecy has to be fulfilled. And ultimately, God loves us and God wants to judge the kingdom of hell. Okay, there's a lot of people over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years who have died. And since the beginning of time, there's people who have been treated unjustly, unfairly. There's been a lot of sin. Um, There's many people who have died for Christ. All these people, they need, they're going to be vindicated. Everything that's ever been done against us, every sin that we forgive and God forgives people and everything, but everything that's unrepentant for the people that are just plain evil, that are operating under the influence of demons and devils, okay, all of those things are going to be vindicated in Satan and the kingdom of hell. We know that Satan falls in a bottomless pit for a thousand years. Then after that, there's a war and then Satan and the kingdom of hell is completely defeated once and for all. So God made hell for Satan and the demons originally, but, you know, when Adam and Eve decided they had to go and sin, well, that kind of changed things. But God doesn't want anyone to go to hell. God doesn't send people to hell. We, We choose. He gave us a choice, and he even sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us, to give us that choice. So when people go to hell, it's because they chose to go to hell. They chose to believe the lies of Satan over the truth of God. So ultimately, it's up to us. So we're just going to see more and more of these things. So did you look at that article, Bob? Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty wild. It's like it, it, it shouldn't be aerodynamic, but it's flying. Yeah, and you'll have to when you get a chance, you'll have to watch the video. Of course, there's some uh, meaningless intensives that are being spoken. I don't know if they block it out on that one. but uh, <laughs> So there's a couple of those being thrown around. Yeah, so, you know. Uh, you know, my view is that just like the movies were were obviously being desensitized for something, so that when something happens, it, it's it's believable enough to people, you know, to to fool them. You know, just what you're talking about the principalities and powers of the air. What people have seen and heard of these UFOs and these spirits for now what, over a hundred years, and and when they start showing up, you know, we just saw. You know, a movie that was just on the TV that was that was being uh, advertised called "The Gods of Egypt." You know, it is this, there's this this fascination with with this uh, all these pagan gods again. You know, so and you know, and those those beings had all kinds of weird shapes and and sizes and entities, and they fly and and I could just see I could see all that tying in together. It's just not none of that is beyond my my belief mode anymore. Definitely. And we know that uh, uh, Chris Putnam and Tom Horn did the book, the books on uh, Petros Romanus and all that business. And they revealed about uh, however, at the Vatican, they have the Lucifer telescope where they actually uh, don't quote me on this because that's been a while since I read the book. So I'm just going by the best of my memory. But they talked about how 
these people over there at the Vatican, they actually believe that they're going to meet um, or that these this alien people are going to come and that they're going to have some great communication with them uh, and so forth. There's actually, I want to say something that, that's worse, but I'm not positive, so go read the book. But, um, you know, it's just, uh, it's amazing. So apparently they've had communi- communications with beings and things like that. But like I said, I wholeheartedly believe that these are demons. Um, I believe that that it's a demonic manifestation. And I believe that there's going to be some great things happening. The Bible tells us that even the elect would be led astray and that God will have to cut short the times um, as a result. So evil things are happening, including something that will affect all of us on a large scale that many people are not at all prepared for. In fact, what would you do? And I'm sure all of you have heard this scenario before. What would you do if you woke up in the morning and all of a sudden you found out that you had no access to any of your money at all? In fact, your money wasn't even worth anything if you could access it. And you open up your cabinet and, oh my goodness, you just realized you hadn't been to the grocery store. And even if you had, you don't have like, you know, enough food stored up or water. What are you going to do? Your vehicle's on empty. You have nothing, literally nothing. What do you think is going to happen? There's going to be basically chaos everywhere. I mean, I remember, and I've mentioned this before, but I remember when the electric went out for a few weeks um, because of a storm back in, I want to say it was 2008, something like that. And I remember there was chaos everywhere around here. People were lined up at the gas station, cussing each other out, shoving each other out of the way. I mean, that, that was just over the electric being out. Can you imagine if nobody can get to their money, they got kids to feed, babies to take care of. People are going to be, their instincts kick in. People will be killing each other. There's going to be martial law and everything. So, uh, Bob, you had mm-hmm. some quite interesting information to share about the economy. Okay. So, Bob, um, again, you're an expert in the business of the stock market, the economy. You have many years of experience. So um, can you refresh the listeners for me just real quick on some of that experience before you go into the economy so that while you're talking, they'll truly listen and know that you know what you're talking about. And again, this is Bob. He is the CEO of TradeGenius.co. And once again, there's a free book for download on his website and there's daily videos uploaded about financial matters that you need to know about. So be sure and visit his website. He also has a business. He can tell you more about that in a moment. But go ahead, Bob, and refresh the listeners on your experience and tell them about your company as well and what you do. And then tell them about the economy. So my background is is that I have over 22 years of experience as an executive with two Fortune 500 companies. They're both in the financial services side, the, the first company I worked for was actually in uh, software as a service, what you would know today as the cloud, and but we did all back office software for people. And my job was to acquire other software companies. So I was pretty attuned to what's going on in the marketplace, and I have a pretty strong financial background. And then the second company I worked for was one of the largest tax preparation companies in the country, and uh, you would know it if I mentioned it. And I also work for them in the mergers and acquisition side, acquiring businesses to fill out their their product portfolio. So I did that for 22 years, and then about 10 years ago, I decided to uh, um, retire at 47, and I started my own business, um, trading and and providing education for other people who want to learn how to trade and become a better trader. And so we founded the company called Trade Genius. And what we do is we educate people on how to trade, trade effectively, trade with less mistakes so that you can make more money and be more confident. And then we also provide what we call trade signals. These are the signals that tell you what stocks to get into at the right time, at the right price, and when to get out of those trades so that you can consistently make more money and and well beat the averages and certainly beat the financial managers and the uh, 
the, um, the the so-called experts out there that are trying to take your money from Wall Street. We we consistently beat the market by by four to five times. And and you know, humility aside, our, our track record is very very good. We we were consistently seventy percent or greater in terms of returns that we give for our our clients. And this last year, we're over ninety percent. And this year, so far, we're about one hundred and seventeen percent. And we document every trade, and and it's time stamped, and we we have a, a full audit of what we do. So those who are interested in learning more, uh, you know, they can come to our site and 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 request our uh, our our returns, and also uh, learn more about what we do. So that's a little bit about Trade Genius and and my background. And so I'm pretty well versed in, in what's going on in the marketplace, and we've been spending a lot of time lately because you know we've been talking about the weather in in the commodity space. But I also we watch the Federal Reserve very very closely, and what they're doing. And Lynn, you were talking about you know being afraid of the Pope, and being afraid of the UN, but there's a third entity out there that's already doing some pretty insidious stuff, and that is the the Federal Reserve systems from around the world. You know, since the financial crisis, they have generated $57 trillion of additional debt that they added to the world. And most of that money has gone, obviously, to the people with the most, you know, the quote-unquote, the elites. And so they, they've got themselves into a pretty big pickle here because they can't generate any more growth. You know the debt that they're generating is not generating the growth anymore. So you're you're basically bogging down. And you've seen what they, you know, in Europe and in Japan, they they're calling it NERP, and that's you know negative interest rates. Well, the one thing that will kill their plan with negative interest rates is for people just to opt out of the banking system. So what they're trying to do now is they're trying to plug that leak, and we all know it here, especially Christians. We know it as you know, the cashless society, no one can buy and sell, you know, without getting the mark. Well, it, it is in motion. And an article I sent to Lynn was uh, from Harvard Business Review. You know, this is how, how highly thought of they are and how far down the path they are. They even identified what countries are going to benefit the best and the most from going cashless as soon as possible. And the United States is one of the, one of the countries that's going to um, – is going to benefit greatly from this because the um, the nature of way our system is structured and and the way our banking system operates is that they're going to uh, be able to um, force everybody into the banking system. They're going to reduce their cost. The IRS is going to be able to tax more transactions. And and the other thing about it is is that the Federal Reserve operates supernaturally, uh, supernationally. You know, we talked about you know the internationalist a little bit earlier in the in the show. Is that these banks today are already operating outside of the law, and so when they go cashless, they're going to prevent people from being able to move their money from country to country. So you're trapped, and this is what already happened in Greece. You know, it, the quote unquote capital controls is happening in Venezuela, and so people are trying to get out of these systems, and they're finding out they can't get out, and country like Sweden, where the population is already pretty trusting of the government, is probably going to be the first country that's going to go cashless completely. And then as soon as they go cashless, it's going to happen. It's going to cascade in Europe very, very quickly. And once they go cashless and once you are trapped in the banking system, like like Lynn said, they, they can do anything they want to you. You can't opt out. It's like Obamacare. You know, you have to buy the insurance. Well, you have to be in the banking system. And so when they go negative interest rates, that's a tax. It's a tax that the legislature does not have to pass. So, of course, these elites love it. They get to tax you and they could tax me. So if you have a business, which I do, and you have employees, which we have, they can just come and say, you know what? The money that's sitting for payroll, we're going to take a half a percentage from that from you because we're going negative interest rates. We're going to stimulate the economy, and this is how you're going to participate in doing it. And there's nothing you can do. You can't say, okay, I'm going to pull my money out of the bank. They say, you can't. Your money's locked. It's in the system. You have to play or you have to be out of it completely. And so that's what's happening. 
and with with the cash of society, and then the ability for them just to tax your transactions. And the one that's really really scary is because you see it now with this whole global warming debate. You have people out there now basically calling people who believe in in the skepticism of global warming. They're calling them fascists. They should be in jail. Well, what if you have a political viewpoint that's opposite of the, of the president or the person in power? You know, we've seen it with the uh, 501Cs where they were just not granting them nonprofit status and they're harassing them because they were on the right side of the political ledger, you know, going against Obama being reelected. What do you think is going to happen when you speak out, Bob Kudla, you speak out, Lynn, you speak out, whoever, and and next thing you know it, your bank account's frozen. And because you're inciting, you know, non-patriotic, you know, news or events or you're not being totally truthful. And then next thing you know it, you're you're frozen. Your family can't they can't survive. And then they're gonna tell you, well, why don't you get back on the air and retract what you say and we'll we'll unfreeze your account from you. So once they get us all locked into the system, we're we're done for. And it's happening, and and you 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 you're already seeing it grow in terms of leaps and bounds in terms of the the number of transactions. I think right now around the world, there's probably seventy to seventy five percent of all tra- transactions are are done electronically. You know, we do it today here. How much time do you use cash for something? And so we don't think of it. We think of it as a convenience. But when you can't opt out of the system, then it's a trap. And so that, I brought that to Lynn's attention because it's now getting really, really big views because they're using it to say this is going to make for a better society. You know, whenever the government says something's going to get better, it usually is going to get worse and it's usually to their advantage. You know, are you talking about the crime is going to be decreased? They're going to talk about people not paying their taxes that will pay their taxes. They're going to talk about reduction in the cost of doing these transactions. But they're going to know everything about you. They're going to know what you buy. They're going to know what you sell. They're going to want, they're going to know who you interact with. They're going to know everything about you. They're going to have total awareness of everything that you do or say. And you know, this is, this is a sidebar, Lynn. But I just read an article today that Facebook is basically mon- if you have Facebook application open, they have they 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 their spiders are crawling through your PC. Well, they're they're already um, doing just that, and they have been now for a little while. But you mentioned Facebook. I went to get on Facebook the other day, and I was logged out. And I was like, oh, that's never good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when Facebook logs you out, that's never good. And I've had, like, numerous accounts just shut down for no reason. So anyhow, some guy made me a manager on one of his pages, and apparently, so it wasn't even my page, and I didn't even ask to be an editor or a manager on his page, but it, it, he allowed me, by doing that, he reaches a lot of people, and he was allowing me to post my articles there. So that being said, apparently somebody, a commentator on that page, said something negative about homosexuals. And as a result, it violated Facebook standards, and I had to review their standards. Even though I wasn't the one that said it, it wasn't my page, I had to review the standards or else, and I was warned. What did I do? You know, I, mean, I didn't do anything. So it was a commentator who this person's page reaches, so you can't tell the truth about or say anything about sin. Or, or you violate that, you know, it's crazy. That's amazing because that same thing happened to me on, I got invited to join a climate change panel on, on Facebook. And I'm like, that is odd. You know, I never really post anything other than, you know, my own videos out on, on Facebook. And when I went out and looked on the site, it was supposed to be submit your, your articles for review. And it, you know, to me, it looked like they were just simply trying to co-op me or to belittle me or denigrate my, my viewpoint. So I didn't join it, but that was just so weird. Facebook just suggested to me that I join this group. And, and, you know, that's, it's kind of scary. And just think when all your transactions that, you know, the, you go to, you know, you watch these TV shows like NCIS and all that stuff. And they, they have like instant recall of every bank transaction you have. I mean, talk about, 
you know, if you have, you know, it's so weird when you talk about, you know, people hiding their sins, but you can't hide your sins now, you know, to from the government. They know every picadillo about you. Google's one of the worst, too. And, you know, the medical, here's a good one that'll be very useful for the mark of the beast. I can't think of the name of it. Maybe, you know, off the top of your head, I don't. But, you know, even the medical industry has the network of all your health information on the computer. Sure. All that's on there. And uh, so they've got everything. So what's going to happen when you don't take the mark of the beast? We don't, you're not going to be able to see a doctor. They're going to know whether you have it or not. You won't get medical care. So how is this going to um, possibly affect, well, not possibly, how's it going to affect people who are, Christian or people who are unsaved and but they've heard not to take the mark. Well, how's it going to affect them? Well, okay, they've got a loved one that needs medical care. If they just went to the doctor and got some antibiotics or got a shot or got a wound taken care of that's infected really bad, that's all they need to do. And the person would live and be okay. But they're watching their loved one get sicker and sicker and their loved ones getting so sick, they're probably going to die. And they have a choice to make. Well, you could take your loved one to the hospital or the doctor right now, but you just have to go take the mark and your, your loved one will live and be okay. Otherwise, you can't get that and well, your loved one's just going to die. Well, then what's going to happen to that person too? That person's going to get in trouble for negligence. Of their, they didn't provide medical care for their loved one because they didn't take the mark. And religious rights aren't going to mean a squat at that point. So there's a whole web of mess that's going to happen. You know, they just said, you know, many will fall away and from the faith, you know, at the end. And now you can see why. I mean, you know, it's interesting. God is, God is going to make people make a decision. You know, I, I watch what's happening in Europe just with utter fascination where the whole continent has basically become atheistic. And then God is allowing people that are of the Islamic faith who firmly believe what they believe. And, and they're coming in there and they are forcing, they are forcing that those populations not to adopt that faith or face their wrath. So it's just really interesting though. You, you throw God away and you get, you get things that are worse and, and God's going to make everybody a good choice. People are not going to be able to say, I didn't know. You know, you, you're, you're going to be faced with some pretty stark choices. And, you know, I, I just pray to God every day that, that you know, he, he, he takes me before these things really come to fruition because I think it's really going to be, be pretty horrific. I talk to people of all sorts of tribulation beliefs and everything because I think that everybody has some truth out there. But in my opinion, I think even a lot of the pre-tribbers need to be aware that Let's say if the pre-tribulation theory is correct, well, there's still going to be things that are going to happen leading up to that. There's going to be some tragic events that do happen, and they're not prepared for that because they think that nothing's going to happen. But I can name things that are happening all over the world that are tragedies all the time. You know, people dying for the faith. Uh, people being tortured, beaten, losing their home, their family, earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanic eruptions. I mean, there's all sorts of things happening all the time. People need to be prepared for what is coming, and they're not. So our time is about up. We are at about an hour here, and um, we're going to be doing recordings every week. So be sure and listen to us. Both Bobby and I are very into Bible prophecy. And so we're always scouring the news for things that are happening. Be sure and visit Bob at tradegenius.co. Get his free book. Again, no strings attached. Totally free just because he wants to help people. Um, watch some of his videos um, that he puts out there daily. And uh, don't forget to visit him, tradegenius.co. Bob, do you have any final words before we sign off here? Uh, no, we, we covered quite a bit. And, you know, if there's things that uh, you, you want us to discuss or you think that I can add value to, please, please let us know and I'll be happy to address them. Where can you be reached at? Or do you have an email that uh, some of the listeners can contact you at? Or maybe if they try to sign up with you or download something and they have trouble or whatever, how can you be reached? 
Oh, you you can uh, you can reach us at tradegenius100 at gmail dot com, or you can uh, put comments in uh, into your uh, YouTube video, or you can uh, come on site and and we have a chat function as well. So um, you can reach us any of those those ways, and be happy to talk about you know what's going on in the stock market, and and if there's specific things you want us to cover in any future uh, shows, we'd be happy to do so. Okay, so and now is that they, can they reach that contact email address on your website as well? Is it there? they can? Okay, all right. Well, thank you everyone for listening. Thank you for spreading the word, and thank you for sharing this message with everyone that you can, because there's no doubt about it. Time is of the essence, and greater things than these are going to be happening. Be prepared. And be ready if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I urge you to repent today of all of your sin and ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your life and to be your Savior. Find a good church, good Bible-believing church that speaks truth, not one of these wishy-washy, watered-down, feel-good message churches, but a Bible-believing church. Pray about it. The Lord will direct you to one. Ask him to guide you and get into God's word and study it. Get it in your heart and just keep praying and asking God to reveal things to you. And he will and he will lead you and guide you every step of the way. But I urge you today, please repent. You don't need this old life. It's just but a moment. This life is nothing when it comes to our eternal soul, where we're going to spend eternity you know, that's the real decision we have to make. This life here on earth is but a vapor. It's just a moment. So who cares? I know it's hard when there's things you want to do or that seem natural to want to do or that you enjoy. But, you know, as a Christian, we can't look, act, walk, talk, or smell like the world. We have to be different. So please seek Jesus today and come to him. He's been waiting on you. He wants you to just get to know him and draw close to him. He wants to bless you. Thank you again, and God bless you.